uh, he has in-depth knowledge of the issues which you see here in the title, various questions, local govern uh, governments, local governance, etc. He also worked with the Panic Commission. And he is at the CDS Trivandrum. Uh, that's his regular position. Currently, as I mentioned, he's visiting us for about a month. So with that, yours, Harila. First of all, I should thank uh, uh, for this uh, opportunity, for this kind invitation. Uh, and uh, I think I should start this presentation with an apology, because no, the, the presentation is not the base, uh, on the base of a final product. It's a uh, half-finished work. It's part of a larger study that we have undertaken for research from local governments and CDS. And uh, it's based on a detailed uh, survey of nine villages. The survey part is over. We have collected massive amount of data. And uh, data processing, we have just started. And uh, we started getting some interesting results. And uh, I thought now I'll make use of this opportunity to share uh, some of the preliminary results. And, uh, uh, in this project, I have a collaborator, Dr. K.K. Ishan, who is a colleague in CDS Doctor. Now, uh, I'll uh, speak about the villages, uh, the kind of data we are collecting, etc. Before that, you know, let me uh, sort of uh, the, give the context of this study. In fact, we were provoked to uh, undertake this study. Uh, in the context of uh, rather lackluster performance of local governments in the productive sector. Uh, I hope uh, all of you might have heard about the experiment of democratic decentralization in Kerala. We started the process in 96-97 and uh, now it's almost two decades and uh, there are many studies coming up on local governments. <coughs> and, uh, they sort of highlight many positive aspects of this experiment. But all of them uh, have uh, come up with this particular result that uh, they have not really produced good, good results in the area of uh, good producing sectors. It was a failure in the area of industry. It was a failure in the area of agriculture. That means uh, decentralization experiment more or less failed to generate sustainable livelihood for people. Uh, many micro enterprise uh, units came, but uh, mortality rates are very high. We cannot uh, highlight many success stories in the area of micro enterprises. Now, micro enterprises are surviving, good industry related uh, units are doing well, but then uh, nothing commendable. In the area of agriculture, uh, uh, in fact, no, there are some model stories to uh, show, but uh, broadly speaking, uh, local self-governments could not make a difference in the area of agriculture. And agriculture in Kerala is declining very fast. It's almost disappearing. The share of agriculture to uh, the state domestic product is as low as around 10 percent. Employment is also coming down. Primary sector in general is coming down uh, very fast. Uh, and, and this is a major problem of concern uh, when you look from the point of view of local governments because uh, agriculture is supposed to be a subject which is uh, to be dealt by the local governments. It's a devolved dairy. So uh, from the point of view of local governments, you, know, you will have to address this question of uh, agriculture and if it, is making, if it is not making a difference, it will have to be taken very seriously. But then there is a trend in Kerala now to blame the failure of agricultural sector on the local governments. Look, agriculture is failing. Democratic decentralization experiment is not doing it. And it is because of this experiment that agriculture is failing. That kind of propaganda is there. This is not true because uh, this uh, decline in agricultural sector started much earlier. Um, right from 70s, this is happening on a sustained basis. Uh, so you cannot blame it on the local governments. 
Rather, one can say that it's a part of a larger uh, structural transformation of Kerala economy. Agriculture is declining, primary sector is declining, but uh, that is not affecting the overall growth of Kerala economy. From around 1987-88, we are registering reasonably good sustainable, sustained high growth rate, better than uh, uh, national average. So, uh, the decline in agriculture can be seen as a part of the larger structural transformation, which probably, you know, according to many people, should be a welcome thing. Okay, also should in any way decline. And it's not affecting the economy as a whole. Uh, population, the, 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 the workforce is declining, uh, the product uh, <coughs> contribution to output is declining. What is there to worry about? Uh, but there is a problem. The decline of agriculture is creating a lot of problems for Kerala economy. One is uh, the problem of food security. Um, in fact, now, now we are producing uh, less than 20% of the food requirement of Kerala. And it's declining every year. Uh, there are a lot of interesting data, statistics about it. Now, there's no point in spending time on this. But uh, to show how alarming it is, uh, over the last three decades, we were losing every year, on an average, 20,000 hectares of land under fire. It is at, at such pace, uh, land under food is declining. This is happening not only in the case of party, across all food crops, uh, uh, this is happening. Agriculture in general is declining and uh, it's happening in a very sharp manner in the case of uh, uh, food products. So, uh, one cannot hope for food uh, self-sufficiency, that is not the aim, but food security is very important and uh, that is uh, lost. And then uh, it's also a major problem of environment. When the party land is lost and when it is converted, it affects uh, environment very badly, particularly uh, the groundwater uh, level is declining, it's creating water shortage problems, drinking water problems. And then, uh, of course, no, even though agriculture is declining, even though population is uh, shifting away from agriculture, there are even now people who are exclusively depending on agriculture for their livelihood. So their problem will have to be taken uh, um, very seriously. And there is also a very strange problem. What to do with the land? Land is not being used. It's uh, uh, remaining unused in many parts of Kerala. It's not contributing to agriculture product, production. And if agriculture is declining, it will have impact on the rest of the rural economy. The animal population has been declining. Uh, poultry uh, was affected. And uh, the rest of the rural economy is also affected. So. Uh, you cannot ignore this problem as a part of uh, seeing, uh, seeing it as a part of larger uh, structural transformation. And the local governments will have to do something about it. But what can they do? Uh, because uh, uh, there were many efforts earlier to address the problem of decline in agriculture. In fact, land reforms, such a radical uh, program of land reforms were uh, introduced in Kerala. Democratic decentralization was uh, introduced. A lot of powers were devolved to the local governments, particularly powers related to agriculture uh, was devolved. Uh, then the group farming experiment, and then uh, government has been investing quite a lot in mechanization, uh, uh, in high yielding varieties, and in spite of introduction of high yielding varieties, extension, uh, invest, investment in mechanization, uh, this uh, decline is doing another. But uh, of course, no, there were studies uh, to, uh, to find out what is really happening. And most of the studies now focus mainly on the symptoms, like wages are very high, productivity is coming down. In some areas, investment uh, has uh, uh, come down. And then uh, on uh, isolated independent factors where I believe it like uh, cost of land and all. Uh, now it is felt that uh, more uh, uh, comprehensive study is required to find out what is really happening in the agriculture. 
the social organization of agriculture will have to be looked into in detail. And that's why we thought no, we should get into this uh, study. And uh, it was felt that more detailed study uh, is required in the area of agriculture. Professor Prabhat and uh, Professor Utsa, when they were in the planning board, in many meetings they were, they were speaking about lack of research in the area of agriculture. Now, earlier there were studies, but in between, now people lost in this interest in agriculture, research on agriculture. In, in Kerala, in between, became slightly unfashionable. So, um, we decided to make use of the framework of agrarian question uh, to, you know, to uh, get, into this, uh, uh, get into this problem. Now, uh, the uh, agrarian question uh, literature In fact, the latest article that I read is uh, your article in Agrarian uh, South. A um, lot of uh, new interest is there in the area of uh, uh, Agrarian question. A lot of research is happening, a lot of publications are coming, articles are coming. And uh, many new questions are being asked, not just uh, the Agrarian question. Uh, agrarian question would mean a large number of new questions also. And uh, in fact, I am not uh, going into that literature, but I would like to mention these three uh, important questions which you see in most of the work. The political question of class alliance and conflict. This is very important in the Kerala, uh, in the Kerala context. So we need to know the agrarian question to understand the Kerala politics, even the current Kerala politics also. And then uh, specificities of uh, capitalist development of agriculture and uh, then the question of uh, surplus uh, from agriculture, how it, will, uh, uh, it can be used for overall development of the uh, economy as a whole, overall capitalist uh, development. Now, uh, uh, when, you, when you look at the earlier literature on agrarian question, one, one uh, uh, strikes, uh, one, one fact strikes, that is, you know, uh, it's a kind of uh, nations, uh, nation state centric uh, debate. You know, uh, the earlier authors, quite rightly, were concerned quite a lot about uh, the balances between uh, different uh, sectors like uh, agriculture, industry, uh, uh, the, uh, whether uh, industry uh, can grow uh, by taking surplus from agriculture, these kind of questions. Now, uh, if, you, if you think about a region, uh, such neat balances between uh, sectors may not be very, very important. Regions can specialize in uh, secondary sector or tertiary sector industry, even uh, at the cost of uh, ignoring agriculture. Specialization is possible in a larger national framework. And this is true of nations also when uh, you are in a very kind of globalized world. And in fact, you no know, nations are being forced to specialize in certain areas. Uh, in uh, in, certain, in industry, if it is specializing, maybe you know, it may not be giving equal importance to uh, agriculture. That's possible, and uh, it's made possible because of international division of labor and high degree of globalization. And it is in this context now people say that agrarian question can be bypassed. Uh, it's a slightly risky area to to come to such conclusions, but uh, I will say that from our data, from whatever we see, uh, one can uh, risk making this conclusion or observation that uh, Kerala economy has tended to bypass the agrarian question. Uh, in fact, no, industry is growing, <coughs> tertiary sector is growing, Kerala economy as a whole is growing in spite of the decline in agriculture. In spite of decline, absolute decline in production, in spite of absolute decline in growth of labor force in the agricultural sector. In some villages, agriculture has almost disappeared. My own village as part of this study we have seen. Uh, Adi completely gone. Uh, many of the, uh, the crops have gone. It has become, it just seems to be an agricultural village. 
But the village is uh, doing very well. It's prospering. Nobody is bothered about agriculture. So one can probably say that uh, Kerala economy has bypassed the agrarian question. But here I will hasten to add that I will not subscribe to the modern notions like the agrarian question is dead. Agrarian question is over. We don't need to bother about agrarian question. Even in the case of Kerala, when I say Kerala economy has bypassed the agrarian question, I'm not saying that agrarian question in Kerala has been resolved. Agriculture is stagnating, it is declining, and it is, it is uh, 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 you know, leaving many problems to be addressed by Kerala. I mentioned some of those problems. The problem of food security. The problem of people who are depending on agriculture for livelihood, even though they are a declining minority. Then the problem of use of land. Then the problem of environment. In fact, no, in your paper also, you are highlighting some of these new issues, uh, some gender dimensions also. Because you know, uh, if you take the available leftover agriculture workers, you now they are mostly men. Uh, because you know, the men had uh, migrated, but uh, women had remained. And uh, the agrarian question is a living question for the women laborers in the, in the, in, in the villages. So it's, uh, it's remaining, it will have to be addressed. Now, um, why this uh, uh, stunting of uh, capitalist development in, uh, in agriculture? In Kerala, uh, production in, in agriculture is almost entirely for the market. Like uh, uh, paddy, for example. Earlier, you had uh, rice mills in every village. So there was a possibility of uh, people to get rice you know, out of uh, their own paddy. You know? Many people used to cultivate paddy because of they didn't want to buy uh, from the market. They wanted to have their own rice. But that is not possible. Uh, in, in most of the Kerala villages, there's hardly any mill left. Uh, in fact, no, there is a cluster of mills near Alve. But in villages, you will not Get, uh, you will have to, if you are producing part, you will have to really sell it. And uh, production is almost based, based on wage labor. Even, even small plots of land, uh, 30 cents, uh, half an acre, uh, such uh, households also, such cultivators also employ higher labor. So you cannot say that you no know, uh, agriculture is uh, pre capitalist or anything. But uh, agriculture is not growing, accumulation is not taking place. Nobody is investing considerably to improve agricultural production. So it is uh, standard. <coughs> now why, why this has happened? I will uh, quickly go through the points. You know, one major reason is uh, land reforms itself. Land reforms it had positive effect on agricultural production for a while, but uh, if you get into the details, you will you'll find out that the pre-capitalist foundation of generation of agriculture, agricultural surplus was completely removed by, uh, uh, by land reforms. If you take the history of uh, uh, Kerala, particularly agrarian relations, uh, you know, the um, by around 1860 in Travancore and uh, Cochin, because of uh, some changes introduced by the then kings, uh, many peasant proprietors uh, uh, got land and they got uh, property right over land. Uh, in fact, in Travancore and Cochin area, more than 50% of the land was under the, uh, uh, with the government. And the government had given proprietorship, property rights, to the, uh, the, the cultivators. So, uh, and uh, they were expanding area under cultivation, uh, they were accumulating land, and they were even reclaiming large scale uh, land from uh, different areas like uh, backwaters. In Kutunad area itself, 20,000 hectares of land was uh, reclaimed uh, through that process. So capitalism was uh, in a way growing, but all these were based on pre-capitalist modes of exploitation. Some amount of land, agrarian relations, change in agrarian relations were happening in Kerala. Uh, uh, peasant proprietors were coming, capitalist farmers were coming up, they were growing. 
but uh, they were growing on the basis of pre-capitalist uh, exploitation. Because you know, the lower layer of tenants, uh, they were unfree, uh, and then uh, the, the agricultural laborers, they were virtually bonded laborers. They, they were not able to really move out of farms. They, they were under restrictions, caste restrictions, the restrictions, fuel restrictions. And what happened was you no know, land reforms broke these bondings. Because you know, the, the uh, lower tenants, all of them got uh, complete right over their land. And uh, they were, they, they, that way they were made free. They, they, were, they became mobile. They can leave the village. They can get into army. They can go to Gulf. Then they can go to anybody. They don't have to be restricted to the village and to the farms. And uh, the, the agricultural levels. And they bought uh, this uh, hawk, this homestead land. Uh, millions of them bought uh, homestead land. They got their address. They got uh, their mobility, their freedom. And uh, if you take uh, 60s and 70s, immediately after land reforms, the, the Agricultural Laborers Union became very active in Kerala and uh, wages started moving up and people also started moving away from agriculture. The, the process of migration started uh, into other states in Kerala and later to the Middle East and uh, it has created shortage of uh, labor. So the pre-capitalist uh, exploitation uh, strategies cannot be any more employed and as a result Immediately after the land reforms, the big tenants or the present proprietors, they became very anti-land reforms, very anti-left. In fact, you know, there, there was a re reorganization of political forces in the, in the state which led to the modern summarism and uh, polarization of Kerala politics. Now, uh, uh, you know, the, the land reforms also uh, destroyed the institutions, feudal institutions for uh, uh, annual repair of uh, irrigation and other other assets. Uh, the original idea was that no, it will be replaced by the local governments. It will be replaced by the corporations. But that did not happen. So the the local ponds and local irrigation systems were uh, remaining uh, unattended because now the feudalism is gone. Feudal landlord uh, has disappeared, but uh, other democratic uh, alternatives uh, did not come. And then uh, this problem of optimization of farming, parcelization of land, um, all those uh, uh, problems were there. I don't, I don't want to go into the details of this thing. These are familiar and it happens in other parts of India also. And then uh, when the cost of labor was going on and the land prices were going up, at the same time, you know, the, the, the Kerala uh, agriculture lost control over the product market. Because Kerala was integrated into the Indian common market, you got the public distribution system, which check, which check the price of uh, rice, price of paddy. And uh, procurement uh, was not happening in Kerala. Uh, Kerala was outside the purview of uh, uh, the procurement system, uh, whereas other states were benefiting out of procurement. Um, and then, uh, uh, this is something which I have written uh, uh, earlier. The problem of dish disease because you know Kerala is uh, getting every year huge amount of money in the form of remittances, and when such money is coming into the in, in, into the state, uh, and uh, you know first of all uh, it creates a resource, uh, you know uh, a lot of labor is leaving that creates a problem, and then there is a spending effect. Uh, it tends to drive up the prices of uh, uh, non-traders land. Uh, uh, ma many services because now, in the case of tradables, uh, you now you can bring uh, those things from neighboring states, other countries. Whereas in the case of non-tradables, it's not possible. If people are coming and investing more and more money on land, land prices will go up. You cannot uh, bring uh, land from uh, Tamil Nadu. So the non-tradable prices have shot up, and uh, it has affected all the goods-producing sectors in. So this is the, the larger context in which we have undertaken the survey of uh, these villages. Uh, I'm not going into the details of survey and results, but some of the some of the uh, survey, uh, <coughs> results are very important in establishing the points which I which I was mentioning here. Uh, 
these are the villages we have uh, surveyed, nine villages. We have, we have uh, not covered the plantation sector. We have uh, taken the non-plantation agriculture in Kerala. And uh, the villages were selected in such a manner that no, all this, except for one, uh, one or two, all other villages are having some prior surveys done in the village. Like you know, two of them are slater villages. And other villages are uh, villages where you have 1961 village studies. So there is a possibility of comparison uh, over uh, about changes in agrarian relations and other things. So that's why we selected these villages. And then uh, these are details about these villages. Mm, but uh, okay, I can skip these things. Now, only thing is that you now the the uh, number of uh, uh, households uh, with uh, uh, um, head of the household reporting as uh, agriculture as the main occupation is very less uh, in all panchayats. If you take uh, there, there are only 12, 12 percent of the households claiming agriculture as their main occupation. Of course, it varies across the guys. Now, uh, this table, in fact, I don't know whether you can see this uh, table in detail, but I can just uh, tell the message. It shows the parcelization of uh, land in Kerala. Uh, up to 20 cents of land will cover 59% of the households. 59% of the households, this doesn't include the landless. Landless is only around 2%. Uh, Fifty-nine percent of the households uh, have only uh, less than twenty cents, and uh, uh, up to fifty cents now it will be around uh, seventy or more. Uh, you know, like m more than one cents or above two cents are very, very, very less. You now the proportion of households having such uh, high amount of land. So. Uh, the, the size of land holding is very small in Kerala. It's coming down for various uh, reasons. And now uh, in this table, you know, the land ownership among non-farming households and farming households is shown. In fact, you know, farming holds, uh, households, or those who claim that you know, we are farming households, their ownership is much less than those who say that you know, they are not farming households. So land is not with uh, the people who are interested in farming. It's an indication. Uh, in fact, now people are in Kerala, land prices are going up like anything. And uh, because of that, people are holding on to land, not because of any interest in agriculture, but to have it as an asset. Uh, the function of land in Kerala has completely changed. It's not anymore seen as a means of production. Uh, now, um, this is an interesting table on uh, cost of cultivation of paddy. And again, I don't want to bore you with all the details of this table. Uh, anybody who is working on agriculture, if interested, I can give the presentation later to them. I just wanted to, uh, to, the, to, to, to uh, draw your attention to the most important message. That is, uh, agriculture is doing well even now in, in, in Kerala in terms of productivity and return. When you spend uh, 14,000 rupees uh, as a, a paid out cost, the return is uh, around uh, 12,000. That's a very good return. It's almost uh, 70%. 70 so if you, are, if you are spending money on agriculture, if you are taking on the operational aspect of it, then it is uh, giving good return. This is about uh, paddy, and in four months, if you are getting such good return, it's not bad. But if you if you calculate the return on the base of cost C, this uh, when you calculate the return on the base of paid out cost, that is cost A, it's very attractive. And even if you include uh, family labor, that is cost B, even then it is attra attractive. But the moment you factor in the interest on land price. If you are spending money for buying land, according to modern capitalist calculations, no, you should bother about the interest on your investment. If that is taken into consideration, agriculture is impossible. Uh, uh, in every panchayat, it's negative. Uh, 
Now, it's a very interesting, a contrasting picture when you take the lease, uh, lease agriculture. In the case of people who are leasing it, though leasing is banned in Kerala, informal leasing is taking place. In the case of lease farming, the, the, uh, the person who is taking land on lease and cultivating, he need not bother about the investment on land or the, the interest cost. He will have to bother only about the rent he is paying to the landlord. There, uh, the return is good. Even if you take uh, uh, the return income on the basis of cost C, positive return is there. So, uh, lease land farming is attractive for the, uh, the people who are leasing and then cultivating because land price is not affecting him. It's not coming in his calculation. He will have to pay only a rent. Uh, and that rent, will, even if it is factored in, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, producing good results. And that's why leasing is uh, becoming slightly more, more and more popular in Kerala. In the informal way, leasing is becoming popular. Now, this is uh, about productivity in, in lease land and on land. Lease land cultivation has an advantage, slight advantage uh, from our data. And uh, <coughs> here again, uh, an interesting piece of information. Uh, the if you take uh, cost according to size class of uh, cultivators, interestingly, the cost is high. Cost of cultivating one acre is high in the case of small size, size class. The cost increases as you move uh, across to higher, uh, higher size, size classes. In higher size classes, cost is less. In lower size classes, cost is per unit cost is uh, per acre as well as per quintal cost is uh, is high so a kind of scale disadvantage is there for the small holders so parcelization of land is affecting kerala agriculture because you know, there is clear evidence of uh, declining cost as the size of uh, uh, the holding increase uh, <coughs> this uh, you know in fact no this may not be because of the size factor alone. Because when you have small size, uh, you have a lot of disadvantages. But that can be overcome if the persons are coming together. If they are making cooperatives, like in the case of uh, coal uh, land farming. When they come together, no disadvantage can be overcome and there is evidence for that. But if they are not coming together, if they are cultivating on their own, there will be a disadvantage because of uh, various scale uh, problems in various markets. Now, again, no, I'm not uh, going into the details of uh, these tables. This is shown basically to tell the story that uh, even now in Kerala, uh, labor cost is one of the, the key aspects of uh, 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 cost of uh, cultivation. In fact, now if you take a cost breakup of cultivation in Kerala, over time, um, there has been considerable saving in physical units of labor. People are saving labor through all means because uh, wages are very high, exorbitantly high compared to Tamil Nadu and other, other, other states. And uh, laborers are not available. In fact, no, farmers are not complaining about uh, high wages. They are complaining about non-availability of uh, labor in many, many parts. They are, they, are, they are ready to pay if uh, laborers are available in time. But uh, they are saving on labor. Saving on labor through various kinds of uh, mechanisms. And one, of course, is mechanization. Mechanization is growing in Kerala. And uh, in this data, uh, in panchayas where mechanization is happening in a big way, uh, that is having an impact on return on, uh, uh, on agriculture. For example, coal and uh, 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 Kutanad and uh, this Vadakam the, the, these are areas where the, the mechanization is uh, growing very fast. Mechanization is happening on a large scale, not only with uh, tillage, but uh, combined harvesters are coming, uh, then uh, of transplanters are coming in a big way. So mechanization is... Uh, taking place in Kerala. Okay, let's skip this also. 
No, I'll, I'll, let me conclude so that now we can have some uh, time for discussion. Now, given uh, this kind of uh, kind of a situation, where you have uh, the land prices creating a problem, making agriculture impossible if you take uh, the, the the price of land. You no, know, like in in coal land, uh, cultivation is very attractive, but nobody will think of buying another acre of land for cultivation because the moment you uh, you spend money for buying one acre of land, it's so, it's so huge investment. You can you can very well go for some other activity, or you can confine your operation to speculation in land market. You can buy the land and uh, keep it there. Don't take the risk of uh, farming. Don't the, uh, you know, it's very risky. You know, the rain can affect, floods can affect. Uh, whereas, you know, if you uh, restrict yourself to the uh, the activity of speculation in land market, it's always rewarding because uh, even during depressions and uh, recessions in the world market, uh, in Kerala land market is not uh, coming down in a significant way because you now the remittances are coming uh, because you now the uh, you know, uh, again because of devaluation and all, you know, people are free to spend more money, uh, 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 remit more money, which is again part of it also the. Uh, the, the, the market. Now, if this is a major problem, land is seen as an asset uh, for investment. People don't want to leave land. They don't want to cultivate, but they will not leave land because leave land because it's an asset. And uh, they want to invest in land because uh, the prices will go. Up. Nothing to do with uh, agriculture or as a means of production. Now, how can local governments over this problem? Lo whether local governments on their own can uh, overcome this problem. One uh, method, uh, one pos possible solution which was thought of during the previous government was to have complete restriction on conversion of uh, agricultural land, particularly paddy land. If you are, if you are sure that uh, paddy land cannot be converted, then uh, the speculative uh, speculative element will not be operating. But uh, through all means, no uh, illegal ways, no conversion is taking place. So it's not enough to ban conversion. Uh, it is not to, enough to uh, uh, make uh, very stringent rules and regulations. Uh, no. But in, uh, along with that, if you can, uh, if you can, uh, if you can make holding of agricultural land, paddy land, attracting through various other means, but then people may hold on to paddy land, uh, they will not convert, conversion is made illegal, and then if you if you retain the, the paddy land, it should be attractive. Uh, for that, no, you can focus all your government activities, various kinds of subsidies, to people who declare that uh, their land is paddy land and it is not uh, going to be converted. And of course, uh, you have this problem of uh, product prices and this parcelized small tiny operators do not have any control over the product market because you know, the mills and large scale operators are coming into any market and the Kerala market is also affected by them. And, uh, Local governments on their own cannot control the product market. You need to have uh, uh, procurement and other operations which can be done only maybe by the, the state government or national government. This is also true of the inputs market. Uh, so uh, these are uh, beyond the reach of uh, local government. <coughs> the question of uh, higher wages which is uh, likely to go up because you cannot have a situation of a capitalist bondage where you, know, you can restrict the agricultural laborers. And the, the most positive thing about land reforms is that you know, it has made uh, such a democratic revolution in the area of uh, uh, agricultural labor. And uh, you, know, you cannot ever go back to the olden days. So you need to have uh, some other means to overcome this. And uh, from our villages, you know, there are two uh, interesting stories. One is Vadakarjeri, another is uh, Ambika. Two block panjayas uh, <coughs> have introduced mechanization models. Earlier also, the government was spending a lot of money on mechanization. 
tractors, combine harvesters will be bought by the agriculture department and that will lie unused. But here the situation is different. Block panchayats have made workers cooperatives. And uh, worker co cooperatives were allowed to buy uh, combined harvesters, tractors, transplanters and all. These two cooperatives and many other models coming, uh, coming up, they are owning large number of uh, such equipments and the workers are trained Workers themselves are repairing these equipments and workers are available not only for their panchayas, for uh, other panchayas uh, in the neighborhood. neighborhood. And uh, the cooperatives are finding it, uh, uh, you know, they are trying to make employment year round. One major problem with agriculture is that you get employment during peak season. And uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the season, everybody is expecting the agricultural laborers to remain agricultural laborers. They are not going to remain there, they are leaving because now uh, migration is there, all kind of uh, freedom is there. But if better wages are offered, better conditions are offered, and year-round employment is offered through various means, it's possible, and the, in these two panchayats, mechanization is happening, and they are helping many other uh, local governments. And of course, now I mentioned about uh, markets, uh, problems with the market side, and then uh, this uh, uh, fragmentation. You know, in Kerala, you know, most of the farmers are having 20 cents and 50 cents, etc. And they cannot control any market. And uh, they have a problem of scale, etc. But this can be overcome if uh, they are brought together through two ways. One is uh, the peasant organizations. If you have a peasant organization truly representing the peasants, you now they can they can they can uh, aggregate the strength of uh, uh, the peasants uh, because so at the level of uh, grain market at the level of input markets now people are uh, having market power they are monopolies they are they are they are having <coughs> aggregated strength whereas uh, small producers uh, the peasants they don't have such this thing but uh, that can that that uh, limitation can be overcome if they are having very good organizations of uh, their own and then cooperativization and other experiments will have to be uh, there. Uh, there are many other points to be discussed, uh, what the local governments are doing, what the local governments are failing to do, what other governments should be doing if uh, the, uh, the problem of agriculture will have to be overcome. But uh, I'll stop here to facilitate discussion. Maybe we'll have 10 minutes to yes. get Good, good. Thank you. So, let's start from MS to this. And move up for it. So, you didn't mention about the impact of uh, mechanizations, uh, mechanization on the returns. Uh, can you give your opinion? Yeah. Like I would like to know, like what are the impacts of mechanization on the returns of agriculture, like, and how are the these models are incorporating the cost of mechanization, and what are the effects on the productivity, and uh, how is it making uh, is it making the agriculture more more uh, lucrative or not? Like, I think you can yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll respond to you after. Yeah, I mean, I have a couple of questions and clarification with regard to, I mean, you have already referred that uh, Mao Jha and Yeru's article on Agrarian South. And uh, rightly, you pointed out a couple of things that they have mentioned. And the agrarian question is not about limiting to agriculture sector or agri agriculture per se, but it's beyond that horizon, which includes labor question, gender question, etc., etc. And in your initial remark, you pointed, I mean, uh, uh, upfront is upfront basically saying that 20,000 hectares of paddy land are left aside in terms of they are not cultivating land, it's not profitable. So there, the question is basically on labor. I mean, labor, supply, price, or whatever. I mean, even the 
the agriculture is they are agreeing to pay higher wages and labor supply is a constraint there so it's basically a labor question that we need to address in a holistic manner rather than looking at land question or whatever number one number two uh, with regard to with regard uh, uh, the, the functioning of uh, local self governance in this wonderland we are using or we are referring often that kerala model is one of the best model in the country that we have had so far and uh, to some extent and in your study that you actually left out that plantation sector not covering in your whole aspect just let me give you an example of uh, what the practice of decentralization particularly in agriculture sector in rajasthan they have devolved all continental subject including agriculture to the panchayat raj institution particularly the, uh, the the district panchayat and below but they, i mean for the sake of transformation and devolution they did it. the only agriculture they they they, they devolved to the district panchayat but not the animal husbandry sector and all the related sectors is there the same situation in kerala <coughs> because that actually uh, talks about a lot in terms of happening or the, the functioning of panchayat raj institution there and we have seen that the, the the structure and the size of panchayat in kerala is huge compared to other parts of the country is somewhere around 5 lakh and plus population and all and it's a huge panchayat and it's a really functioning well because they have all resources as well so that they can supplement whatever grants they are getting from upper side higher side number 2 so what exactly is that with is a per se agriculture is the only confined confined in the devolution sector or the allied sector as well so that people can have a multi sector option number 2 number 3 with regard to influence of pds actually i didn't get exactly what you want to say because recently if you look at the whole nfsa national food security act where they have given enormous responsibility to panchayats particularly in terms of its implementation and its strengthening of the whole act where they are, they, they, they i mean uh, government of india is taking the responsibility be it the procurement or the distribution it's only procurement the largely the distribution aspect left to the panchayats where they can have a proper decentralization model and they can uh, effectively implement that is that happening in i mean it's going to happen in kerala because we have seen in southern part most of the states they are well championed in terms of universalizing or near universalizing pds what we all are demand in the last question on cooperative model kudum sri is i heard about that because i don't know exactly what exactly is the, the, the nature and work of the kudum sri in kerala but it's basically the women self help groups given i mean enormous power in terms of raising resources credits from the banks to form a group and they can get into the agriculture basically they are doing in an agriculture sector as well in kerala what i thought i have no idea about that so if that cooperative model is working well in kerala then why actually agriculture land left out and uh, we have seen we have heard about that uh, late 60s and early 70s folks have been model of cooperative structure and this is kindly basically a failure model is that that you are advocating for the same model because if i look at the same article in agrarian south the myth and classical reality there they are actually advocating the same kind of cooperative structure and model so that we can revise in the last point probably you can reflect more on that in costing uh, uh, the income and uh, farmers income and uh, we put cost because my phd area is all about that so uh, <coughs> the contrasting picture that you presented here that least in land holders they are getting much i mean in terms of return those who have the own land if you include the market price or capital which price and all that but this is basically a contrasting situation that you are uh, that you have posed have you looked at that the period of least in probably that actually contributes towards the productivity hopefully that might uh, get into the productivity and uh, profit aspect so if the least in period is clear for 3 years 4 years or whatever because that is basically you are saying that informal because there is no such formally recognized or said in kerala so what exactly is the period of least in so that uh, they can take care of land development and all that sorry i have taken right okay. anyone in the back there no this is just the first round you can come back in the second round as well so we know santosh 
So I would like to uh, add something that's with me in that sense. As you said that uh, uh, Kerala economy has bypassed uh, the urban investment, and uh, but not resolved. I remember Henry Bernstein. Bernstein says that the North has global North has resolved the urban investment, and even he says that South has also, at some sense, uh, they have resolved. But but this is very confusing, bypassing and resolving. I, I, I want a clarification on this. First question is about uh, mechanization and uh, impact on attacks. Um, in fact, uh, mechanization is uh, really helping the Punjabis in terms of saving uh, cost, particularly uh, the in reducing the physical units of labor uh, employed. Uh, but uh, in, in the panchayas where mechanization is uh, really happening, the wages are also very high. Like uh, the uh, Antikad or Vanakanjeri, uh, in all these panchayas, wages are very high. And that's one reason why mechanization is progressing there. Now, even if uh, the physical units are considerably reduced, now we have data to prove that uh, in all this uh, Punjabi, wherever mechanization is introduced, the the uh, family labor and higher labor in physical number of units <coughs> come down. But uh, wages are high, uh, and because of that, you know, the, the proportion of wage is not significantly low compared to uh, other other. <coughs> but mechanization is having a major impact. And if, it, if machines are available and machine operators are available, then farmers uh, are going for that. And in Kerala situation, laborers are not resisting this. Earlier, labor resistance was there. But in Kerala now, because of acute labor shortage, no, labor, laborers are not resisting. And uh, <coughs> these two uh, uh, areas, in fact, the labor unions themselves have taken initiative in making the cooperatives. And uh, they are owning the tractors, uh, machines, and all. And uh, the the workers in the cooperatives are earning much higher than what they used to earn early, uh, earn earlier. So it's a, it's a good model. But uh, I like one part of your question: whether the cost of machines are taken into consideration. I'll say that no, because uh, no. The, uh, the cooperative societies or the machine owners are charging the, the, the persons. They are, they are, uh, they are paying uh, according to the machine hours. But uh, there can be an element of subsidy because the cooperatives are subsidized. When they bought these uh, tractors, combined harvesters and all, the local governments and uh, the state government <coughs> have subsidized these cooperatives. This is a new experiment because the earlier uh, the local governments and state governments were not ready. They didn't have provision to finance such buying of uh, machines by cooperative societies. Uh, but no, it's a it's a new institution evolving. Uh, uh, in some places, it is done. And there is an element of subsidy that may be getting reflected in the uh, the, uh, the charge they impose on the peasants. But uh, as of now, it is producing good results, and uh, the idea is spreading. And uh, more, more and more elements are brought into mechanization. In fact, you no know, baling of uh, straw is also now done through machines in some areas. It's 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 uh, it's catching, it's spreading. Uh, if institutional support is there, uh, the labor unions are not uh, restricting it, provided they are also taken into confidence, they are also part of this exercise. If the idea is to is not to exclude them, then there is there not be a uh, problem. And uh, the second point, <coughs> your point about uh, 
the agrarian question as a question of agrarian uh, uh, labor. I do agree with you. Uh, no, agrarian, agrarian question is not resolved. I was speaking about a possibility of bypassing it. Now, uh, the question of agrarian, uh, the agricultural labor is there. Now, most of the agricultural labor households, now they have left farming. They have migrated into, uh, in the same village, now they are getting into other jobs. There is considerable amount of mobility and they have moved out of the villages. That is true of tenants as well as uh, pure uh, uh, agricultural laborers. But a sizable proportion of uh, agricultural laborers are there who are depending even now on agriculture. Their, their question remains. And uh, that's why I don't know this, this article also mentions about some of these questions in, by way of critique of uh, what uh, uh, others have told about. Then, then there was a question about uh, public distribution system. In Kerala, in fact, now there is a consensus for a universal public distribution system, though we are moving away from it. Uh, but when you have a universal public distribution system, that doesn't mean that it should affect the uh, the, the, uh, the price of uh, farmers, what they get. Uh, when you subsidize uh, the consumers, uh, then no, that is uh, uh, that is having an impact on the on the market price. And if you are to overcome that, no, you need to have a proper procurement system. That's the experience of our country. But uh, even when you, you had a proper procurement policy, uh, Kerala was not benefiting. It was, it was considered to be a deficit region. And uh, procurement operations were not uh, being done in Kerala. And you have, on the one hand, uh, land prices moving up, uh, wages going up. And uh, you are having a very low uh, market price because of the influence of public distribution system. Uh, that is why during the, you know, the, the previous uh, government, a strong uh, procurement uh, program was introduced. And it could save a lot of land in uh, coal area, Kanad area and other areas where uh, the government could introduce uh, procurement. But uh, the, the, that government also could not introduce procurement in uh, other parts. Only in rice centers it could be introduced. In many other areas where rice is cultivated, procurement is uh, not reaching. So, so what is not against PDS? Uh, PDS should be combined with a proper procurement policy so that you know, farmers' uh, interests can be protected. And you asked about Kudubasri in agriculture. I forgot to mention it. No, they are doing a lot of uh, uh, good work in uh, in. Uh, <coughs> paddy also in agriculture. You now they are, in fact, now they are leasing in land, a kind of uh, leasing mediated by the local bodies. They are resorting to that, uh, and uh, large areas are brought under cultivation by industry in this. But now these are not properly institutionalized. A lot of informal arrangements are there. Uh, but uh, if uh, the experiment is to be sustained. Uh, institutional uh, arrangement will, be, will have to be there, like leasing. Whether we should go for leasing and what should be the conditions of leasing. And uh, now, uh, farmers are ready to leave land uh, on lease, but they they will have to be assured about uh, their ownership rights. Uh, so there should be uh, some legis legislation which will allow leasing. But we will not allow exorbitant uh, rent if uh, it can be regulated and if it is through, if it is mediated through local governments and, and if it is for Kudubasri uh, and such uh, uh, combined efforts, then uh, that can be experimented. But no, experiment is going on, but it's, it's not properly uh, institutionalized. It's one way of uh, 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 dealing with this problem of uh, land land as an asset and a medium of speculation, land as a means of production. If these two can be separated, okay, you have ownership, you keep the ownership, but use is very different. And if these two can be separated through proper institutional mechanism, 
Now, there are problems uh, related to that, but now this is one way of looking at it. Kurupasri is experimenting such a thing. Then, uh, lease, lease period. Uh, in fact, now I love to check that particular point uh, the, about uh, the lease period. But uh, here, in fact, now the lease uh, farmers are making more uh, returns because here now it's a question of accounting in that table. What you see is uh, in the case of uh, owners. If you take cost A and cost B, there is a good return. If you take cost A where you are uh, taking interest rate on the land price, then everything is negative. Uh, agriculture is impossible. But uh, in the case of the calculations for the lease farming, you don't have to bother about the land price and the interest rate on that. You are calculating the, you are taking only the actual rent paid by the uh, lessee. Uh, that is why uh, you know uh, and that that is much lower than the imputed interest rate. That's why the return is uh, shown to be high. But your point about uh, lease period is important because now when you have longer lease period, then now uh, the tendency to over exploit the land and all those problems uh, mentioned by the uh, original contributors of agrarian question will come. And uh, the most interesting and important question, by passing and uh, uh, resolving. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm very sure that uh, the agrarian question in Kerala is remaining unresolved. Uh, the problem of environment, the problem of food security, the problem of labor, the, problem, the, the gender dimension of it, all those things are there. So it remains unresolved. So it's wrong to say that agrarian question is dead, agrarian question is over as far as Kerala is concerned. But at the same time, you know, even when agriculture is declining, the rest of the economy is doing well. I mean, overall, the economy is doing well. Uh, the growth of the service sector, the banking sector, the, the tourism sector, the IT sector, it's not dependent on agriculture. You don't need to really make a surplus from agriculture to invest in industry, in services. The growth of those sectors are not dependent on the surplus invested from agriculture here. You, you are globally integrated, you have migration and remittances. That money is going into the tourism industry. That money is going to the IT industry. So Kerala economy is registering continuous growth, uh, reasonably high growth, in spite of continuous decline, sustained decline in agriculture. So Kerala economy can do well uh, in most respects. No, I'm not saying that it's a, it's a great uh, situation of success and all, but compared to other states, uh, in spite of very poor performance in agriculture. It's only in that sense uh, one is saying that no, there is an element of bypass. <coughs> in fact, no, we, this study is, uh, no, uh, I've given only some of the uh, the, the quantitative, quantitative data. We have gone to the villages, very detailed uh, interviews and other aspects, uh, other other uh, methods were resorted. In fact, you know, one village is my own village, Baradika. Uh, in that village, uh, when I was doing my schools, we, we had uh, half of the village paddy land. 10% you know, <coughs> Parambok and all, but the, then uh, the rest uh, coconut and all, the garden land. In the paddy land, there were three crops taken. Two crops paddy, one season. And uh, there was no leisure, there was no lean season. Uh, the entire village was uh, oriented towards agriculture. And uh, every household, major household had three ponds, three, four ponds. It was not a, you know, there was no uh, river or anything, uh, basically rain fed. And then uh, the, the, the garden land where coconut is grown, where you know, all kinds of crops are uh, mixed. So uh, the, most of the people were dependent on agriculture. And in the same place, you don't have paddy now. You don't have sisam cultivation. And ponds are all gone, canals are all gone, 
so a, 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 a village which was completely, almost completely depending on agriculture is not anymore depending on agriculture. Agriculture is almost disappearing. But village is doing well. You have uh, schools, colleges, you have uh, um, everywhere, you have uh, banks and financial institutions, you have hotels, you have uh, faith industry going on, all kind of churches and temples everywhere. And you know, then we can say, <laughs> if you're saying that it is hmm? like bypassing, then you can, you can say that agriculture has been left on its own. Yeah. Uh, you see, people are not anymore depending on agriculture. I like most of the people who all those families which were dependent on agriculture, they are into industry, they are into services, they are earning their livelihood. And uh, remaining people there, they are also finding ways out of it. Now, but no, there is a problem left. This, this village had so much of wet land. And all that wet land is now remaining unused and they are being uh, converted. And they, that is creating problem. And, and there is a minority of people who are even now dependent <coughs> on agriculture. They are not mobile for various reasons. And uh, their livelihood is a problem. And then uh, the, the, the question of land. In fact, now, if you, if you go to some of the villages in Kerala now, uh, the, since agriculture is not flourishing, the land is, you know, all kind of growth is there. And uh, you will see uh, animals which have been seen for many years there, because you, know, you have this uh, wild, uh, you know, this moel. Uh, 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 <laughs> so many, uh, you know, th then there is a question of what are you going to do with land? You know, land is even now fertile, and this land has supported such a flourishing culture in Kerala. You have the entire. Uh, uh, Malayalam language coming up, uh, then, uh, then uh, <coughs> agriculture supported a very nuanced layer of people who depended on agriculture and developed all this culture and everything. But now that land is remaining unused because of a particular kind of social organization of production. And if you, if you can change that, you know, maybe we can use the land in a very, very useful way, solve the environmental problem. Solve the uh, other other remaining uh, uh, questions related to agriculture. That's why I'm saying uh, that you no, know, it is bypassed, uh, but uh, it remains unresolved, and many leftover questions are there. And uh, of course, you now the larger question about terry bears and uh, others, you no, know, that is to be debated. You no, know? uh, I hope more more such articles will. <laughs> No, you, uh, your, th this particular article is very interesting, I found. Uh, those are going to come and we are going to engage with these people. But uh, uh, maybe uh, I'll, I'll just uh, mention one point. No, when they say that agrarian question of capital is resolved, uh, or for the West, agrarian question is resolved, it only means that uh, they have shifted the question to their work. Because you know, they can now produce after giving all kind of subsidies, and they can uh, they can dump it in the uh, in the third world countries because of uh, all international agreements and all. And therefore, you no, know, they they are not really uh, constrained too much uh, because of their great question. So it's a probably a question of transfer because of uh, the environment of globalization. Uh, these are things which uh, which will uh, attract a lot of uh, debates. Okay, so second round. Uh, so, yes. Uh, no, maybe there needs to be a clarification since uh, the presentation was made and the discussion was mainly on uh, rice cultivating areas. Uh, but the bulk of the agriculture income in Kerala is not coming from rice any longer, but from the plantation crops. So. Uh, I am not saying that this is a lacuna of the study as such, uh, but perhaps there needs to be a clarification for people who are okay. not directly familiar with the uh, topic of agriculture in Kerala. Um, secondly, I am wondering if the agri agrarian question can be resolved in Kerala alone. Uh, 
given given the fact that kerala is part of the indian common market given the fact that there are huge limitations imposed upon the state governments and the local governments and given uh, the social organization of production as you mentioned so i'm wondering whether the agrarian question if at all uh, can be resolved whether it can be resolved uh, in one state alone so i'm wondering about that. uh also even within these limitations even with these limitations uh, there was a brief period during the term of the previous ldf government uh, if i am not wrong uh, there was a brief period when the area under paddy cultivation went up so how did that happen and what has changed right now okay so uh, and i have just one question that really interests me uh, is there any difference between farmers cooperatives and workers cooperatives what i mean in your experience in your long experience in kerala which do you think is more viable do you think that there are qualitative differences between these two which can be more successful and, and so on? Okay. Can I go to and repeat but uh, as far as kerala is concerned the uh, lease uh, market is, market is not legalized so uh, do you suggest freeing the uh, lease market and also uh, as far as i know in uh, in case of punjab those who have a small parcel of land they have leased in uh, uh, leased out their lands to the larger ones and there is a currency a uh, reverse currency so uh, as for the as far as the growth is concerned so you can see uh, taking into consideration the scale of uh, land now the uh, uh, agriculture sector has uh, grown very fast in punjab so are you suggesting the same uh, process in case of kerala so uh. so uh, couple of questions one is uh, regarding land reform prozo utsapat naik uh, uh, and uh, student arindam they have uh, in when we were students here we used to discuss that in bengal in particular uh, post 1990s there has been actually a reversal of land reform uh, which is something which was quite alarming and given that there are very few states i mean three in particular which had land reform in the first place what do you think is happening in kerala in that context is there something of that kind happening that there is actually concentration of land happening rather than distribution of it as it uh, Place. the study is still on i think arindam is still working on it the second question i have is uh, and when you say that people are moving away from agriculture towards let's say services i don't know if this question was asked but uh, they are moving to let's say services in particular is this more a distress movement or is it actually a louisian transition kind of a thing not with the manufacturing in this case with the services Small, okay. Uh, yeah, small clarification. Small. Sir, with regard to the 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 study that you wanted to have been undertaken in nine villages that you were talking about, okay, nine villages. Yeah. No. Okay. And uh, almost all, I mean, out of that seven villages, they do have uh, best line kind of 1961 survey. Yeah. 1961 survey probably in seven villages. No, not every. In uh, seven villages. No, no. Out of ten, uh, four villages. Okay. are having the 1961 village study uh, which was done as a part of the census okay sir so, uh, my clarification is basically i mean uh, because you have left off the plantation sector which is huge in terms of yeah. contribution and all that and uh, i don't know the animal has went to sector the contribution of that and the other one is particularly the fishery and fishery means not the marine fishery that inland fishery and its contribution and even you uh, talked about that ponds and all that used to uh, use that water and all that so what is the situation now and what are exactly the contribution towards this nine villages and also for the farming community all right okay so last chance so yes. see like uh, uh, as you mentioned that there's a difference between seeing land and asset and seeing land as means of production so but i think like in kerala it's happening because uh, the especially in kerala this real estate and speculation is happening because of over populate like over density of uh, the land so in kerala i don't like i land like other many other parts of india we cannot see many fallow land and all if we are moving through the 
and they kind of we cannot see many fallow land and all. So how can we tackle that problem? Because that's the that is the main problem, I guess, which is affecting the agricultural production and agricultural in Kerala. So how can we tackle that problem? Okay. Okay. This, uh, of course, now uh, Subin's point is very important. I have not uh, brought in <coughs> plantations at all into uh, this presentation, uh, particularly because now, as far as local governments are concerned, plantations are outside their field. So they cannot do anything about uh, 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 the, uh, the plantations. And even in the case of state government, in the area of rubber or tea or coffee, you know, they are all uh, under the union government. Yes. The state government cannot do much about it. And this is particularly true of uh, uh, local governments. Yeah, but this is not an excuse to leave out agriculture, you know, leave out plantation agriculture when you discuss agrarian question. Uh, therefore, in fact, no, we are we are certainly dealing with uh, plantations, uh, but not included in. In fact, uh, I'm um, concurrently working on uh, plantations, tropical commodities. Um, so um, um, it's an important point. No? You cannot uh, the discussion will not be uh, complete if you think about the plantations. And I fully agree with you that uh, there is a question. Uh, uh, whether it can be resolved uh, in, in Kerala alone. You know, uh, um, you know, um, you know, in fact, no, this, this was one point which I wanted to really tell. Local governments, you know, of course, you know, they can do a lot, but uh, local, the local governments, if, uh, if it is to really uh, resolve the issue, then it needs to be supported by the state government and uh, even the union government. What about the, the price of fertilizer and pesticides? Uh, and if the union government is having a policy regarding procurement, uh, market uh, of inputs as well as output, then uh, it will be difficult, extremely difficult for the local uh, governments to go on its own. And that's where you know, the local governments and democratic decentralization, etc., aren't the decentralization experiments have become uh, a kind of manufacturing concern for all kinds of things that the union government or higher levels of government do. Now, if, uh, if the local governments are to be meaningful, you know, they will have to be supported properly by the higher tiers of government. So, uh, the, the problem in, in its entirety cannot be solved at the local level. That doesn't mean that uh, local governments are not important. Local governments are areas where people can come together, try and resolve these problems, and uh, then uh, raise the issues against the provincial government and the union government. So they they offer a democratic platform for uh, addressing these issues. And uh, it's true that uh, uh, the pre during the previous government, Due to some uh, concerted efforts and intervention, uh, some uh, trend could be reversed in some areas. In some areas, it's still continuing. In fact, you no, know, the decline in uh, production of egg and uh, meat that was also happening. The animal husbandry sector was also declining. That was reversed, and uh, even now the increasing tendency is sustained as far as uh, uh, such areas are concerned. But in the case of Paddy, Paddy area, uh, you know, for two years, uh, that tendency was reversed, but uh, uh, it slipped. Because now, uh, procurement and some amount of intervention could not really uh, check. Now, because you know, the basic reasons are more uh, fundamental, and uh, the, the previous government also couldn't really extend the procurement uh, into new areas. Other, other related problems could not be addressed. And uh, <coughs> there was a question about the difference between farmers' cooperatives and workers' cooperatives. Now, I'm not attempting to answer this question in any, in any detail, but uh, I'll tell uh, one point because if you want to address the problem of uh, workers, it will have to be workers' cooperatives uh, because now uh, 
if, if you want to ensure that no, they are paid uh, uh, reasonable wages, if it is peasants or peasant societies, you know, uh, workers will be at a, at a disadvantage. And uh, then there is also one problem, you know, now it's a uh, suppliers market as far as Kerala's uh, agricultural labor market is concerned. If the persons are uh, offering them lower wages and other difficult conditions, you know, they, they are not going to be able to mobilize workers. And if uh, if workers are to be mobilized, if they are to be seen in agriculture, then they will have to be treated in the most uh, decent way and they will have to be properly remunerated. That's the only way uh, agriculture can be saved in And uh, this yeah, um, uh, question. I'm not saying that no, they should go back to leasing in an unregulated way because leasing can be uh, really pro problematic. No, you can have uh, all kind of leasing. Like no, you can uh, can have corporates coming and uh, leasing in land from the. Uh, cultivators and if it is unregulated, the workers, you know, the persons will be suffering. So, uh, you know, different types of leasing is possible. So, what, uh, what is being thought of? No, this is where I'm saying that like, these are all tentative kind of uh, observations. In fact, no, I'm, I'm trying to make this presentation in front of Futsa. <laughs> I, I've asked for some time. I would like to spend some time and uh, show all these things. You know. Uh, so that I can firm up these uh, observations. No, these are not these are not final uh, kind of thing. More data will have to be analyzed, and more uh, exchange of thoughts will have to be. Done. But um, as of now, I should say that <coughs> leasing may be required because you no, know, these two, as uh, Ashwini was saying, uh, you have these two dimensions: land as a means of production, land as an asset. And this divorce is becoming very, very serious in the case of Kerala. And if you can, if you can divide uh, these two functions of land in, in some way, that is through uh, leasing. But leasing can be uh, taking different courses. That's why you have to have a regulated leasing, uh, leasing kind of situation where you now owners, you know, many of the owners are small people. Like, you know, they are not landlords, like 50 cents, 30 cents, one acre. They will not also sell land. Because, you know, it's, uh, it's a very important asset. You don't want to uh, throw it. But they, they don't have time to cultivate. So, ownership should be with them, but uh, use right should be given to somebody. And how that can be done? Through, through proper planning, uh, detailed discussion, detailed uh, thought will have to be uh, given to that, you know, Punjab model cannot be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, copied as such. Uh, that is not healthy. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> got your point. And, and uh, Rohit's question. Uh, in fact, you now uh, whether there is a reversal of land reforms in Kerala, uh, no, I don't think that is happening. Parcelization is happening. Concentration is not. Uh, happening in a big way, but if you calculate uh, Gini coefficients and all, no, Kerala situation is slightly better than other states, but uh, it's not very, very, very attractive. Uh, I mean, uh, very egalitarian kind of land distribution. You know, uh, you know as far as non-plantation land is concerned, you are not having very big land loads because the ceiling limit is there. Even to reach the ceiling limit in uh, many areas, it's very, very costly. But uh, uh, yeah, that is the situation. You cannot say that you no know, reversal is taking place. But there is a very important point related to this, which uh, in fact, no, Professor Prabhat was concerned about, and uh, there was a committee appointed uh, by the planning board. There was a research group on uh, land reforms, uh, uh, where no, uh, the report highlighted the importance of uh, plantation land. Uh, which is of a very colonial nature, which is sustained, and in spite of land reforms that is remaining, a lot of encroachment is taking place. 
and uh, we don't have a clear picture about uh, the ownership of this land. If, uh, if the land reforms in Kerala is to be made, uh, made successful in the real sense, meaning, meaningful in the real sense, you will have to really address this question of plantation land. Um, because uh, you know, a lot of things are happening even now uh, in the area. Now, in that area, there is a reversal uh, is uh, really happening as far as uh, plantation land is uh, concerned. In fact, uh, uh, new new kind of legislations are being brought to really uh, further uh, give concessions to the plantation owners. And all. That's a matter of serious concern. But uh, we don't have proper data in the planning boards. There was an attempt to collect all this information. We have managed to put together some data, and uh, that is uh, published in the form of the uh, report of the, uh, the, the research group. But what will that really uh, go much ahead? And uh, whether it is distress movement, uh, I don't think so. It is distress movement. Uh, this is the case of Kerala. You know, the, the when when you see, when you see movement of uh, agriculture workers from agriculture into other areas, into nearby towns or metropolis metropolis in in India, you know, we all have this concern whether it is distress uh, movement, and in many cases it's distress movement. Uh, you don't have anything to fall back upon in the village, so you are escaping from the village and getting into whatever is happening. But uh, in Kerala, that is not true. We have some students working on this area, and uh, the mobility uh, means uh, some amount of improvement in wages and uh, other conditions. You are you are generally getting into uh, better better situation compared to uh, compared to the uh, compared to what is offered by the agriculture. And then there is a problem of social status and all. If you are remaining in agriculture, you know a certain kind of Social stigma is there because you no know, earlier this was occupation of uh, 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 untouchable uh, uh, bonded labour. You know, the situation is changing. You are getting uh, people uh, from every community to work on land, but uh, uh, you know, there is there is a movement out uh, outside. You know, these cultural aspects are also there. Uh, it's not it cannot be uh, referred to as distress, though. Your observation is almost completely true in the case of many other other states. All right. So thanks a lot, Harila, uh, for this very insightful and wonderful talk. And uh, I'm sure you will get another opportunity to interact with him before he leaves through maybe one more seminar. Exactly. Thank you, Ashwin. You know, I told you I'm going to. Uh, I asked for some time. Uh, yeah. This will have to be improved. Yes, yes. We will be able to another possibility. Thanks. 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 Thanks.